Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another AFK Journey video. And today I'm going to be talking about the unjustified hate my girl Florabelle is getting. Before I even start, look, hey, before I even start, I got two things to say. One, if you've already been pulling Florabelle and you were like, man, I like her, but I've seen some videos from these like you know, popular YouTubers or Reddit posts or something, and I don't know if I should finish her. She's great. She's great. She's not good. She's not mid. This is a great unit. If you consider Cecia a great unit, Florbell is also a great unit. I just want to say that if you've invested some of your tickets or some of your gems into here, especially if you're a free to play or low spender and you're like stressing about, should I start my account over? Flora Bell is great. You have not done your account a disservice. I have receipts to back that up. I did some testing before server reset from like an hour ago, and we're going to do some testing live in this video. I believe all of that data, all those receipts will back up the points that I'm making. Also, I'm going to be referencing some other content creators in this video. I'm not trying to stir up drama with these people. These are great content creators who I not only watch their AFK journey content, I'm subscribed to like multiple of their channels because they're like doing for a career what I do as a side hustle. I respect the hell out of these people, but I disagree with some of the points they're making. And let me kind of show you why. So there's a video that came out from M Tash or the AFK Journey King on this YouTube channel. And he is basically making the point in this video that like Florabell is mid, doesn't do anything for the game, yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like the reason this video came out is because he was unimpressed with his version of Florabell when he got it. I think he received some backlash from some Florabell fans and it's not kind of doubling down on his Florabell take. The reason I think his Florabell take is bad is because of this video that he made about getting Supreme Plus Cecia eight days ago, where he's literally just like gushing over Supreme Plus Cecia, like changes his account, massive power up. I believe Florabell is a better version of Cecia. So I believe if you think Cecia is like account changing overpowered, but you think Florabelle's mid, I just don't think you're right. Now, he, it, to Imtash's defense here, I think what he's making the case for is should you like wail on this unit? And I think maybe the case he's making, especially from his account's perspective, is if you already have Supreme Plus Cecia, you are going to see a slightly less return on your investment if you're investing into Florabelle. However, you don't have Supreme Plus Cecia and you have not gotten to play with the like overpoweredness that is having a like big time summoner DPS unit on your team, get yourself a Supreme Plus or a Mythic Plus is really the breakpoint you're looking for. Florabell, and you'll get to experience that like Cecia awesomeness that some of us have been experiencing for weeks. And then you have other videos like, I mean, here's a video from Vulcan, who's probably the best content creator on the AFK journey scene right now in terms of like people I look up to anyway. Um, and the, like the title of this video is the problem with Florabelle. There's not one. The problem with Florabelle is she's a better version of an already OP unit. If you are ranking Cecia in like S tier on your tier list, Florabelle must also be there. So if what you're talking about is, is Florabelle a good unit? She is a good unit. I want to show you something else. I'm going to go ahead before I do anything else. Let me show you some results. I'm going to put this same. So let me put this back up here. OK, here's some testing that I did about an hour ago. Now, this was on Necro Dragon. Let me show you how I set this up. The up top here on this versus area. This is two team comps that I had set up with a Vala carry and a Cecia carry. Here is a run and these are screenshots. By the way, I did the runs three times. You you have so many runs you can do. I would do it done a hundred times and average everything, but you can only refresh the fight so many times. Okay, so I did three runs with a Cecia Vala carry comp with Kruger for the debuff. I got Coco as my support and my tank out here. In the exact same formation, I then swap Cecia for Florabelle. Both of my characters, here, let me, let me show you this. Let me, I want you all to see this. Both of my characters are Supreme Plus. Now, I will say my CC is only plus nine. My CC is only plus nine, but the break point on her weapon is the plus five. If I get her to plus 10, we do see a little bit more damage from the entangled tar targets damage per second. It goes up by 10%. That will make a slight difference. And there's a little bit of stats here, um, but they're both at Supreme Plus. One of them is at plus 10 right here. The other one's at plus nine. This is about as close as you can get to these characters being exactly the same, or it's as close as I could make them for this testing. And I feel like of the people who've been reviewing these units online, or at least of the reviews I've seen, this is the closest I've seen. One thing about like Imtash when he was talking about his is he kept showing screenshots of like either Florabelle being a higher, you know, awakened level or the Cecia being a higher awakened level. 
the, every character before Mythic Plus is a shadow of themselves, right? Like all of the A rank characters that people think are good, besides, I don't know, most of them aren't even good until Mythic Plus and all your S rank characters get a massive power up at Mythic Plus. Don't even, if you don't have a character at Mythic Plus, you personally really don't, I don't think, have a great feel for how they are. And Florabelle and Cecia are some of the best before Mythic Plus because summons are just kind of OP in this game. So I did want to show you my characters are basically at the same point. When I was running them this test, they were both also at level 180 and both standing in the same spot. Now you can see here on the Necro Dragon, uh, the Florabelle out damaged the Cecia by what? Like 2 million damage or something like that? It is significant. Like this is not 10 more damage and again this is like i didn't go with the most extreme example i'll just say i tried to pick one that was somewhere in the middle like if i did three tests which is what i did i went for the ones that was like okay this is like her middle damage number this is her middle damage number in both cases vala out dps both of them but this is a single target fight right vala is a single target damage dealing unit she's pretty good on necro dragon so she outperformed here but the floor belt outperformed the CC up. Then I did a fight, well, I did several runs of a fight, where I took Vala out, replaced her with the Floribel, put Floribel and Cecia on opposite, you know, like opposite sides of the formation, and I would switch them a couple of times. It didn't make a huge difference. And in a comp where they were in there together with the Kruger providing the defense down and Coco buffing, same comp, minus Vala, insert Floribel, Florabelle almost doubled Cece's damage, like nearly twice as much. So I don't think, like, I don't think that either one of them are changing the game more than the other. I think they do, at least from the testing I've done so far, both fill that same high damage character on your team that provides some crowd control and the annoyance for the enemy of having to deal with a summon. And the annoyance of having to deal with a summon is important. You are oftentimes, you're mo almost always fighting AI in this game. And if the AI has to stop killing your team to do something with the summon, or you can cleverly place your characters where your summons are pulling AOEs away from your team, that's huge. And Florabelle brings more summons to the fight than Cecia does. I would argue Cecia's one summon is better than any of Florabelle's three, although Hammer Bro or Hammer Child seems pretty good. Anyway, now I want to do some more testing before we move on. That was all on Necro Dragon. If you watched my earlier um, Florabelle video, I did a ton of PvP with her yesterday. I'll do some more at the end of this video, but let's try the next boss. So let's go to battle modes. We have today Snow Stomper. Now, normal attacks, it already shows Florabelle in here as a normal attacker up here with your Maribels. You know, this is interesting to see her in there. I'm actually just seeing that for the first time. So let's hit battle. I'm currently rank eight, but that rank eight fight was me just running over the hell level one real quick so I could unlock endless mode. You can see in here, again, I wanna give the most receipts as possible. I have not fought endless mode yet. This is gonna be my first time fighting it. I have not even hit the first, you know, break point for rewards. So here we go, I'm gonna hit battle. Now, let's build a comp for this. Here is the Florabelle comp that I was using. I have a Rowan in here, which I don't think you need for Florabelle, but I do think you need for Cecia. So that's another little thing. But let's do, let's start with a Cecia team. I'm gonna put the Cecia over, let's put Cecia here. Let's have, I'm gonna keep using my, um, oh gosh, what's this, Corin, right, Corin? I'm gonna keep using Corin. I'm gonna use Vala again, and I'm gonna use my tank and Rowan. Let's run this and see how we do with the Cecia. And let's just kind of see what they do. Now, Cecia is standing there. Both of these units are not mobile units, and both of the units want to ult. Cecia ults. There's Mr. Carlisle. He's out, and Snow Stomper does this thing where he turns somebody on your team into a snowman. He actually turned Mr. Carlisle. Or wait, is that Carlisle? No, he turned my tank into a snowman. That's interesting. What, where did Mr. Carlisle go? Did he die? Like, I don't know. Anyway, Carlisle got Carlisle got punked out of the fight. I think when my tank got turned into a snowman, Carlisle got deleted. So Carlisle just got deleted again. This time my snowman is, um, is it the, who's the snowman? Is, wait, did they make core in the snowman that time? Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, you do definitely kill the snowman a lot faster if you have your summon out. Right? Like, um, Cecia's summon, Mr. Carlisle, is huge for killing these snowmen. And now you can see as this fight goes on, these hell fights are tough, man. This guy does a lot of damage. So we got him to not times 19. We'll see what our damage numbers are here. Uh, we are now rank 
seven. Okay, that's fine. We got to the 808 million damage mark, and here's our numbers. So he out damaged the hell out of us. Uh, Vala was my highest damage dealer. Then Cecia was my fourth highest damage dealer in this fight. Now, this is not a fight where CC is like particularly recommended. Keep that in mind. But Florabelle was recommended. So let's run the exact same team. Let's run the exact same comp and then see we got a 1.4 million from CC right there. Now let's run it again. And this time we're just going to take CC out and we're going to put Florabelle in. Now, if you're in the comments section right now, typing about how like my team is not the perfect snow stomper team, blah, blah, blah. I know, I don't know what the perfect snow stomper team is right now, but I do want to point something out right away. I'm going to slow it down. Immediately, Florabelle summons one of her children. In fact, by this point in the fight, she has three summons out against a unit like this guy who is like constantly punking a unit that he's hitting and summoning snowmen. All of these extra characters that I have, and I'll speed it back up, killing this snowman are a big deal. And if one of my characters dies from Florabelle, there's more of them out here already ready to be doing that job. Whereas if Carlisle is gone, he's it. He's the only one. Florabelle is constantly putting out these kids to help her in the fight out here. We get the snowman. You can see all of Florabelle's kids, which targets the snowman. They burn it down. My character barely takes any damage from that, and they're back in the fight. Okay, so we're DPSing again. This is a fight, by the way, Snowstopper is an interesting fight because like his ability to stop you from ulting is definitely extra annoying. We do knock his haste down right there, which is whatever. He's going to turn somebody else into a snowman again. Who to get this time? Who snowman ended up for me? Did he snowman one of the kids? No, he snowmaned Corin. Anyway, we ran out of time, so we timed out. The um, the support we got right there from Rowan was actually enough to keep us alive. We jumped to number six after that hit the 10 million breakpoint. Let's look at the damage meter. There it is, 1.9 million from Florabelle, but we did more damage in the fight. I would say in this fight, honestly, they performed fairly similarly in both cases. They were outperformed by the, the tank in this case, did a lot of damage. Um, yep, I don't know why. So if Florabelle and Cecia did about the same thing, why was this run better? I would argue this run was not better because of the more damage that Florabelle did, and she did do more damage than Cecia, but the like added weird utility from having all those children running around the field messes with the AI, and that is valuable. Every time Snow Stomper is killing like Spear Baby instead of Corrin, that's opening Corrin up to do more damage. As long as if she's killing a Spear Baby or Hammer Baby instead of, you know, my tank, that opens up my tank to do the most damage on my team. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Then Rowan didn't do any damage, but it's Rowan, whatever. Vala was basically unaffected there. So it is what it is with her. There's definitely better Snow Stomper teams out there. Like this probably isn't my best Snow Stomper team. I'm just trying to make the point though of comparing Florabelle to Cecia. Was that a massive difference in power? No, I don't think it was. I don't think so, right? I, I improved my rank a little bit. I hit another benchmark right there. Is it a huge difference? No, but is Florabelle mid? Not if CC is S tier. They're both S tier if that's the case. I do like, I just do think it's really interesting that she's in here for her like normal attack. I guess it means the norm, maybe her normal attack hits harder than CC is, where CC relies on Carlisle more than she does. I'm not sure on that yet. Okay, let's do some arena testing again. I, I want, I'm currently ranked 10 in arena. So once again, the, I'm trying to show the most in game experience that I can. I'm ranked 10, I'm at 586k power. Here's somebody at 568k power. Let's see if this is a decent fight where previously I would have run a Cecia. I'm gonna just drop my whole team. Like I'm gonna build a team from scratch and I'm gonna build a team with Cecia and then I'm gonna replace the Cecia with Florabelle and see if she can handle it. Now, in this team right here, we have a couple issues. Issue one is their Vala is basically untargetable for us. We're gonna end up having to target a support if we try to use our Vala. And Vala is one of the best carries on my squad. So I am gonna put my Vala out here. I'm gonna have my Vala target the Odie. I'm gonna use my best tank. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put Rowan out here because I'm putting Cecia out here. Right, so if I was running this comp with like a Cecia, I'm putting like Cecia here, and then I'm gonna put like my Vala here, and then I'm gonna find some way of baiting their Vala out with a like, you know, maybe another tank, a Tamija, something like that. If you're running like an Igor, maybe you could put Igor back here, and that's Vala sucks at killing Igor. So there's ways of like making Vala, and I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to um, the crowd control spell here so I can 
Well, actually, no, where, th where that where that vol is, I don't know the crowd controls best. Anyway, you have to do something about that here. One thing that is nice about not running Cecia is I can run not Rowan. Like right here, I can run a Smokey. If I want to run Smokey instead, I don't feel like Floribel needs the Rowan as much as Cecia does. So I could make this swap if I am feeling more comfortable with having a Smokey over a Rowan. And then if I wanted to, I can still play whatever I want in the back. So I'm going to do that right here. Now, my Smokey is le is about the same power level as my Rowan. Let's see if we can win this fight. Let's see how it plays out. I do think this is an... Now, I will say also, Florabel works wonderfully with Rowan. Like if Rowan is the support with in whom you are investing, I think you have still made a good investment. Um, but... Cecia needs him. Cecia needs him. Florabelle is getting summons out without having him in this fight. Now, Florabelle ends up getting stopped. We knew the Vala was going to be a problem, but we won. We won. That was great defensive formation from the enemy team. Actually, it was kind of like a masterclass of a Vala defense. Notice how Vala was the last person I killed. That's what you want. If you're running a Vala defense, Cecia and Florabelle are probably neither one like OP in-game PVP characters. They're 581K. That is very close to me. Let's see what we can do here. Now, this is another Cecia comp where she's kind of in the middle of the formation. It's double tank, I'm sorry, it's a Vala comp with Vala in the middle of the formation. We are gonna run, ooh, let's see here. I wonder if we can just run, run like max summons. I'm gonna run two summoners and then I'm gonna run another tank to deal with their Vala. So I'm going to try and have their Vala like take a lot, or I'm going to put, you know what? I'm going to try the cheese. Let's try the cheese right here. Let's go. Let's go cheese man Brutus. So he'll have a, he'll take a long time to die. I'm going to swap Smokey out for Rowan. Boom. And then I'm going to try and just massively summon into this fight and then hopefully overwhelm them with summons, making it harder for their Vala to ultimately like pop off. She's going to have to take her time a little bit to kill Brutus. Like that's his power right there. That ult, their first Vala ult was basically wasted. And now I'm going to get to summon. Boom. There's Carlisle. And then my floor bell got locked down, but there's Hammer Baby. We're locking everybody down. And that's kind of the wombo combo right there. That was how it's supposed to work, right? Like Floribel and Cecia together works like that. It also, I got, look, they were running a single DPS high-end Vala team. Two supports, two tanks, Vala's supposed to just pop off and reset everybody. I made it so the Vala could not instantly start resetting my team. They all grouped up. Both my summoners summoned into it. High value right there. Could I have won that with somebody else? Yeah, probably. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk about here is a should you pull kind of aspect to the end of this, where I want to look at the banners in particular and kind of say like who I believe should pull for Floribel if they want to and who I think should pass. I think the most obvious thing and the thing we've been focusing on in this video is comparing her and Cecia. Yes, there's still more boss fights to compare. If you're talking about comparing them in AFK grinding stages, it's honestly really nice to have both, but I think you could just replace one with the other. One of the reasons I say it's really nice to have both, you eventually hit a point in this game, and I don't think I have a fight active right here, where you have an, a round one and a round two. Floribel and Cecia are both insane in pushing these, these fights, and if you can have one in round one and one in round two, that's nice, but they are swappable. Right, you can definitely just want run one of them and clear most AFK stages. That takes us back to the banners. Should you actually pull? Step one here of thinking about this, I think goes like this. If you are a mega whale, you already pulled her anyway, what are we even talking about? If you are somebody who spent a little bit of money on the game and is heavily invested into Cecia, maybe you already have your Cecia at Supreme Plus, Mythic Plus, something like that. I don't think you need Florabel. like need Again, I, using the word need is kind of interesting. Like she is not going, she's not so much better than Cecia is that like, okay, Cecia's bench forever bring out Floribel. No, she's not that. But I did show some examples of you can use them together. It works. There are times when you can use them both. And if you want to pull her, go for it. She's going to do good things for you. But the person who needs Floribel the least is the person who already has Mythic plus Cecia. 
if you have not invested into Cecia yet, I think having one of these powerful summoning characters is wonderful. If you're just starting the game and this is the first raid up banner that you're coming into, it's going to be so much easier for you to get Mythic plus Florabelle here than it is for you to get Mythic plus Cecia from here and here. Now, if you are spending money on the game, I think you spend gems here and I think you spend your money here, right? I think buying these is probably more valuable than buying these because if you're a new player, you have to have a Supreme Plus character to get your eight copies of Florabelle or you have to have a Mythic character to get your six copies of Florabelle. So you do need, as a new player, you do need to be pulling on the other banners too so you're ranking up your other characters so you can continue getting Florabelle off this banner. Okay, now let's look at the banners themselves. If you are just pulling with diamonds and you're like, ooh, I kind of want Florabelle, but I already have Cecia, what I would say is look at the prize pool. Right here, your only S rank character you can get is Florabelle. It's 3% drop rate right there. Um, I had to full pity this. Now, there were a couple times where it was like 12,000% rank up your character packs popped up. I bought that. But like, I had to go to full pity for every copy of Florabelle I bought. It cost me about $200 to do to do Florabell. So that that kind of sucked. It could have been less if I would have got lucky, but I didn't. I did get a significant amount of A-level heroes. You have those at a 10%. And then you get Omni Acorns. Omni Acorns are really nice to have. I hit several times 30 Omni Acorns. I obviously hit a ton of the rest. If you are thinking about spending your gems on the other banners, this banner is interesting for free to play in those spenders because you have a 22.5% chance of hitting A-level characters on your wish list. There are A-level characters, specifically a lot of the ones I have selected here, especially these first four, that are massive for your account. You have a much better chance of hitting them here, but this is also the banner that the game just regularly gives you tickets for. So you're gonna be pulling here a lot. Also, if you do Florabelle, right? Like let's, if you do Florabelle, let's go to our wish list for a second. If you go ahead and get Florabelle, you don't have to have Cecia on your wish list. So you can have Thorin on there with Igor if you want to have a hell of annoying PvP character that at one copy actually does a lot of work for you. Or you can have in-game goddess um, Carolina right here. So you no longer need, again, we're talking about need and I, it's a weird word to use, but like if you go ahead and get Florabelle now and you haven't invested into Cecia yet, you don't ever have to put CC on here and you can immediately move on to Thorin, who's the best tank in the game, or one of these other two Graveborn characters, whichever one you like, kind of pushing your account forward a little bit. So I think that's nice. However, I do think if I was talking to a new player about throwing gems at this banner or this banner, I would say this banner until you have Mythic plus Florabelle. Okay, Epic Recruitment Banner. The, why I say you should probably, if you're going to spend, like if you're a light spender, why you should go here? Because it's so much like this is spend your gems here spent buy summon tickets here that's what i would do because here you can pick your five the it's a 30 pity here compared to a 40 pity here you do need like i said to be pushing up other characters just to get more guaranteed opportunities for the floor bell if you're a new player so here's where i would wail if i was wailing and the percentages here are better for pulling an s rank character and an a rank character now the omni acorn percentages are much worse but especially the times 30 percent or it's a little bit worse anyway but the a level boost i like that a lot it's a smaller wish list and you actually have the option of wish listing a level characters right here so if you're really trying to push your merrily or your corin you can put them on here and do that and actually watch this i'm going to do something right now i'm going to show i'm going to show that off let's go to i'm going to click this i'm actually going to take tamisha off so let's edit this wish list nope I want to take Tamisha off and I'm actually gonna put on Coco because I just want some more Coco in my life. Where are you, Coco? She's chilling, there she is, there's Coco. So I need some more Cocos. I'm gonna put her on there. I'm gonna do a 10 pull right here. I had 19 towards Pity. So we're gonna see if we beat Pity real quick. Might as well end this video with some summons. Oh, I've never, guys, I, I have literally never seen a gold light from that position never that's the first time ever i've also never had a double gold pull so okay corin acorn acorn get these acorns out of here come on we're making a video give me more interesting content than omni nuts okay acorn damien i mean that's pvp troll man okay we'll always take odie until we're done with him there's okay, i've pulled so many ardens in the last day and a half there's viperion and then let's see if we can hit 
the A rank on the... Oh, Corrin was the... Okay, so that's what I want to show you. Good. So by putting the A rank character there, you actually get five dupes if you pull them. So if you're trying to push those A rank characters a little far, farther to you know, do better in Dream Realm, stuff like that, you can do that here. If you are spending a little bit of money, I'm doing it now because the S rank characters that I'm going for, I don't really care about as much anymore. So, okay, I hope that made my point. I hope I was able to make my point as good as I could. I think in TLDR, I think Floribel is a slightly better version of Cecia. And now maybe as the game plays out, she will improve as more summoners come out. You can take more advantage of that shield. I didn't even really talk about the shield. I think it's one of like the smallest things that she does is that shield, but her damage tends to be a little bit higher. I think her utility is a little bit different. She doesn't get her stun out as fast sometimes. And I think Carlisle is the best. If we're talking about Floribel's three children versus Carlisle, I think Carlisle is better. But I think having the three children running around the field, messing with enemy AI is very powerful as well. So I think Floribel is slightly better than Cecia. And I think if you have Cecia ranked at an S rank, you kind of need to have Floribel ranked at an S rank too. I guess that's my point. Anyway, have a good one, y'all. I hope I wasn't like ranting and again no disrespect to the other content creators they are welcome to their opinion you are welcome to yours there's just some receipts that i could give okay thank you all for watching have a great day peace